The Atlanta Hawks were able to acquire all-star guard DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs. The trade that sent Murray and Jock Landell to the Hawks and the Spurs will receive Daniello Gallinari, who was waived, three first round draft picks and a pick swap. At first, the trade was confusing from the Spurs and I thought they may get John Collins in this deal or why even trade the John Tay Murray, but the draft picks seem much more viable to them and they are looking to hit the restart button. Now the Hawks get a guy who is coming off a great year averaging 21 points, 8.3 rebounds, and 9.2 assists on 46% from the field and 32% from three. Murray was close to averaging a triple double while being an active defender on and off ball. He keeps getting better every season and it wasn't shocking seeing him reach all-star status. The Hawks get someone who can be a secondary creator for them and relieve some playmaking duties off of Trey Young. Murray was the guy last year in San Antonio and he was tasked to do a lot for their offense. Now he can take a bit of a step back and play off of Trey. Even when the Hawks made it to the conference finals a few years ago, it was still was clear that they needed a high level secondary guard next to Young at some point. The need amplified in the 2022 playoffs where they met a Miami Heat team whose defense stifled and slowed down Young. When the Heat are allowed to switch multiple bodies on Young, show help early, close off driving lanes, and pressure him tight, it makes the offensive process hard for this Hawks team, especially when much of the offense runs through Trey. A lack of an additional creator, mostly a consistent driver to the rim, was really a problem and contributed to the Hawks' lackluster play. Murray as a creator, his drive into the rim should make Young being off ball a bit easier. Murray has some craft to him where he can break down defenders, get to the rim, and create shot opportunities for himself or his teammates. He utilizes hesitation moves into crossovers that can freeze defenders as he gets to the rim. The Hawks really didn't have a consistent driver to bend the defense other than Trey. Murray drove to the rim around 18 times per game. According to Cleaning the Glass, Murray shot 64% at the rim and 44% from the mid-range. His mid-range frequency is at 50% and this is the area of his game he uses the most to score. The mid-range game from Murray that he has been able to put together has been fun to watch and is a key part in his game. The pull-up J has been something where he can break down defenders one-on-one -on -one and get to or come off ball screens and if he sees a drop defender or his defender going under his ball screens, the mid-range shot is something he can go to. Because of the lack of a pull-up three for Murray, defenses look to constantly go under his screens, but to combat this, just have the screener re-screen, and if these screens are inside the arc, the mid-range shot is there to him with defenses going under. He's also a threat to come off of handoffs, drive inside, or get into his mid-range shots. Murray has a high release point, so it's tough for defenders to get strong contests on him or block his shot, and over the years, he just got this mindset to where he feels comfortable shooting over anyone. Murray also has a floater and a runner game he gets to when he is in the paint, and off ball screens, he's grown comfortably getting defenders in jail and getting to those floaters. He averaged 9.2 assists last season and that just puts you in really big company of assist guys such as Trey Young, James Harden, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, Darius Garland, etc, etc. And Murray only averaged 2.6 turnovers while operating for 27.3 usage, which is impressive being someone having the ball in your hands a lot, the turnovers are going to jump higher to around 3 or more, but Murray has been able to take care of the ball and keep his turnover numbers pretty low for his usage. He's adept at making pocket passes off of ball screens and can make some tough passes through small windows. He understands how to use his scoring ability, noticing where help is coming from and making the right reads. He can show off more skip passes off of ball screens and just an overall variety of different passes, but for the most part, he is very accurate in his passing and he can be a high level secondary playmaker next to Young. The biggest draw with this trade is that the Hawks get a guy in Murray being a defensive guard in the backcourt with Trey Young, who is capable of defending the best guards in the league at the point of attack, moves his feet well laterally, good at navigating through screens and using his long arms to contest shots. 
Murray has a 6'10 wingspan and some active hands that allows him to pick players' pockets and is a smart defender racking up steals, playing the pass in lanes. He averaged two steals on the season, which led the league this year. Ever since coming into the league, he has been a pest of a defender with great instincts, and if you are not protecting the ball or throw a lazy pass, he is quick to jump out, pick it off, and now he's running out and converting two points. Murray at 6'4 is a great rebounder. He has a nose for tracking down and grabbing boards, pushed the pace in transition for the Spurs last season. The Spurs ranked at the fifth best pace in the league last season, and that is in large part due to Murray pushing the ball and making plays. He has grown comfortable getting a rebound, running in transition, getting downhill, and either scoring or finding an open teammate. This has been a fun part of his game to watch, and he can be crafty in his transition attacks, utilizing crossovers and finesse finishing to score. The Atlanta Hawks operated at the 20th best pace last season, and they are mostly a half-court team, which makes sense given that they have one of the best half-court creators and Trey Young on their team. The offense ran through Young and he had a usage percentage of 34.4 which ranked 4th in the league. The Hawks are a team that loves to run a lot of ball screens, double ball screens. With Young being a great creator, it's tough to guard him in their offense, so naturally it opens up shots for others. They don't push the ball quickly in transition, instead opt into work in semi-transition where Young can get drag screens and operate from that. So if this trade, a key point is that getting a guy like Murray should improve more of the Hawks' transition attack while giving an extra added punch to their half-court offense. The dynamic of Young and Murray and how they will work off of each other has been a concern I've seen thrown around and it's a valid concern. Both of these guys are heavy with the ball in their hands and the off-ball reps isn't there, so how can they work? This is going to be a pairing where it's probably going to take some time for them to play off of each other. Are we going to see Young working more off of pin downs, being active, moving and relocating off ball, more catch and shoot opportunities? Also with Murray, he's attempting more threes, but the three point shooting needs to be better. 32% on the season, 34% on catch and shoot threes. If he doesn't have it going from deep, it's going to allow teams to not really worry about him when he is spaced at the three point line. Playing alongside Young, you are going to see a good amount of open threes, but he is going to have to be a consistent threat from out there. That'll wrap it up for this video. Did you like the Murray trade? Do you have any concerns about it? Also, please do give it a like and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. And with all that being said, I'll see you all in the next video.